we will have our choir picnic. Um, Beth, do you want to say anything about that? Oh, there is a first time visitor. Where at? Okay, back there, Tammy. Thank you so much. Tammy will be back with a gift for you. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Starting the roof 
church. For on this day, 2,000 years ago, 50 days after Easter, the Holy Spirit swept through the disciples and gave them the power to speak languages they had never learned. It was the beginning of going out as Jesus commanded and proclaim forgiveness to all people. And so we gather to give thanks for the Holy Spirit and to be renewed to witness to the power of God's love in Jesus Christ. Would you share with me in our statement of faith? I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us share in our first hymn, and only hymn, uh, Spirit of God Descend Upon My Heart. say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Spirit, we ask that you might speak to our hearts, that you might breathe new life into us so that we might truly celebrate with you in ways beyond our imagination. So that we might continue to be the body of Christ in this, your world, as we serve those in need. For this we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let the people of God say, Amen. So today we celebrate Pentecost. We hear these familiar words about what happened over 2,000 years ago in regard to the disciples. Now, over the last week or two, we've heard about how they received a message from Jesus, talked to them, and said, I'm going to ascend to my Father, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to be patient, because I'm going to send 
what we call the advocate, to be a presence for you. And that is a good thing. The advocate, I share that in my ministry on a regular basis. I talk to people and I say, who is your best advocate? Do you know who your best advocate is? Yourself. You are the only person that knows the entirety of your journey. You are the one who knows what you need the most. You are the one who has hopes and dreams. Who's the next best advocate in your life? Now this will change according to the person. Some will say it's my spouse. Some will say it's my child or grandchild. Some might even say it's your pastor. It's the person who oftentimes, when you're in a particular area of life, that you need somebody to speak on your behalf. And who knows you almost as good as you know yourself, but the person you've committed to spend your journey with, or the person you nurtured and raised, or the person who nurtured and raised you. And for those who are willing to allow the pastor in, the pastor knows a lot about some of you, sometimes more than the pastor wants to know. <laughs> That's right, Jeff Pavan. <laughs> I'll tell you that joke later. But those are the people who speak on your behalf when you can't speak for yourself. So, the advocate is somebody who speaks on your behalf. And here we have Jesus Christ saying to us that I'm going to go away. But the advocate will come. And if the advocate comes, who's the advocate going to speak on behalf of? You. Because even if you think you know yourself all that well, and that your loved ones know you all that well, or your pastor knows you all that well, God knows you better than you know yourself. God knows our needs before we know. God knows our hopes and dreams, our fears, and our faults. And God continues to invite us into a relationship that builds us up to be better than what we were, so that we can do more for others, so that we might be the body of Christ. On that faithful day when the disciples gathered, they didn't know what to expect. They just were following orders. They were going through the motions, if you will, the ritual, the routine. But within the ritual and the routine that all of a sudden, new life was being breathed into them. New life was being offered to them. Not so that they would be the only ones that would receive the breath of God, but that others might breathe the breath of God through them and hear the good news. So, there was like tongues of fire above the disciples' heads, and they began to speak in languages they had never learned. And others were there who understood what they were saying. And they got the message of God's love and hope and forgiveness. That's the birth of the church, the communion of saints, that draws us together to be the body of Christ, so that we might continue to do what is necessary, not for us, not for good shepherd but for others who are in need. If we're doing this just to keep this church afloat, 
then we're missing the boat, my friends. We're called to serve. And we don't get to choose who we serve. God tells us distinctly, feed my people, the hungry, the homeless, the ostracized, the marginalized, the unemployed, the dirty, the lonely, the forlorn. When we do that, it's as if we do it to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we do that, we are living out the gospel. When we do that, the advocate is speaking through us and in us and around us so that others might have new hope. The thing that I find most empowering that Dylan read in the scripture is the last line. And when the advocate comes, the advocate will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. So whatever we have learned about those things, the advocate is going to show us a better way. So that we might offer forgiveness, not according to our standards, but according to God's. That we extend the arm of fellowship, not so that we have more people to join us in our work, but more people are in tune with the Holy Spirit to serve that we might show love to even some of the most unlovable people that we may ever encounter. That's the gospel message, my friends. That's the good news. We are called by God. God speaks our name, and we're here to respond. What is our response going to be? Where is God calling us to breathe new life in, to our journey? What are you praying that God will bring new life to in your life? May we find those answers together. Amen?
it's one thing to hear uh, choir perform an anthem, but it's another when the author of the anthem yeah. is with us. And we've known him since he was a bitty bitty baby, and has he grown into a uh, witness and example of Christ. Thank you very much, Dylan. I think that's the good one. As we gather at this moment, we turn our thoughts to God to speak to our Creator in ways of, uh, that are very intimate. There are prayers that we make public, but there are many prayers that remain within our hearts and in our thoughts. I would ask that you would keep in prayer uh, Sharon Green, Tilly Waller, Paul Bachman Sr., uh, Lynn Soule, uh, for Brandy uh, Palmer. Brandy and her family lost their, their pet, Bruno, last evening. And as many of you know, our pets are not simply four-legged friends, they are family. And so I would ask that you would hold them in your prayer as they mourn that loss. I would ask that you would keep Pat Reiner in your prayers. Pat is in rehab at Phoebe. And for Janet Gurman, I understand that she recently was in the hospital. And so she's home, and I would ask that you would pray for her for health concerns. I would also ask that you pray for the family of Althea Bowman, uh, Shirley's sister, uh, but also for uh, Althea's granddaughter, who is uh, Robbie. I know her as Robbie German, but uh, I don't know what her married name is now, uh, and her two daughters. There are a number of people that are listed in the inside back of your bulletin. Uh, again, uh, for Alice Schnell, who is coming home from the hospital today, uh, I would ask that you would keep in prayer uh, those that names that are listed. Even if you may not know who they are or what's going on in their life, this I can t tell you, God does. And when we pray for these individuals, it reminds us that they and we are not alone. And so I ask that you might join me as we speak to God from our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving and compassionate, full of wonder and awesomeness, we gather as your people that we might find nourishment, encouragement, new ways of expressing love and forgiveness to all. We thank you for life itself and how precious it is for allowing us to love others and to be loved by others. We pray, O oh gracious ones, that you forgive us those things that keep us from doing your will. And we pray also that you might encourage us to do the things that we should do but haven't. Holy One, as we gather, there are specific prayers that I have lifted up from this altar for people who are in need of healing, for those who need a sense of wholeness and hope, for people who are struggling with faith. We pray for the poor, the hungry, the needy, the unemployed. We pray for those who are battling addictions and anxieties that are beyond our imagination. We ask that you might continue to call women and men to service in social ministry so that they might be able to help these, your people. Help us to support the caseworkers and those who continue to answer your call. We pray, O oh, gracious one, that you continue to extend the call 
that men and women who follow the need in medicine, whether it be by the bedside of someone in the hospital or in hospice care, or if it's somebody doing research in a lab, or if it's simply the people who clean the hospitals and nursing homes, who provide food for those who are away from home, the therapists and the technicians who take care of so much that goes unsung and unknown. We pray that you might hear our prayers for this church so that we might heal your spirit more fully and that you might move us to do great things in your name. That you might help us to set our souls to song so that we might sing your praises day by day hour by hour, breath by breath. Fill us with your breath, then, so that we might breathe upon your people everywhere, that they might know love and forgiveness in Jesus' name, as we celebrate being the body of Christ on this Pentecost, so that we might offer words that we don't even know, but people hear, our blessed. And just as you have blessed the saints that have gone before and you promised to bless the saints that are yet to come, we join with them in one voice praying the prayer of your Son, our Savior, taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we begin the season of Pentecost, we are reminded of the life of the church and the saints who have become the living stones that make us the body of Christ. Each is called to participate in the support and participation of our holy mission and sacred ministry. Please consider what you give and how you give it, either through your offering envelope, or electronic giving, or texting. Thank you for carefully considering what you are able to afford. And as we anticipate those gifts we pray together the dedication prayer in the bulletin. We offer ourselves and our resources to the care of the community in this space and around the world in the way St. Paul taught, as servants adapting our hearts to show love to those who are unfamiliar to us. Amen. For those who are gathered with us via the internet, I invite you to place bread and grape juice or wine in a place that can be seen by you and those gathered with you as we celebrate this mystery of faith. For those gathered in the parking lot, I invite you to turn on your four-way flashers so an usher can bring you the elements thus participating from your vehicle. Let us begin our Pentecost celebration by receiving Christ. Come to this meal. Come when you are fearful and be made new in love. Come when you are doubtful to be made strong in faith. Come when you are regretful and be made whole. Come old and young, there is room for all at this meal. For we are invited to come together around this table as those who belong. Amen. We recall anew 
the words and actions of our Lord and Savior on the night before he died, when he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after having supper, took the cup of blessing, and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, This is my blood which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take all of you and drink from it. Do this in remembrance of me. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ offers. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless us in our eating and drinking, that our eyes may be opened, and we might see the risen Christ within ourselves, within each other, and to all for whom Christ died. Amen. At this time, if you take your uh, gift of communion, uh, unwrap it. When you unwrap it, the cup inside, flip it to the smaller end and peel that back. That will have the bread in it. Once you've done that, place the bread in your hand and just cover it with your other hand and let us pray. Holy and gracious one, we give you thanks for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, that through the broken bread we are reminded of the cross and that we have been forgiven of our sins in Jesus' actions. Bless this bread now in Jesus' name. You want to lower your mask and take and eat. Do this in remembrance of Jesus our Lord. this time I invite you to turn the cup over the larger end. Be very careful as you peel it back and you will find the grape juice or wine. Once you do that, just put your hand over it and let us pray. Gracious one, you remind us that your blood was shed so that people might know forgiveness. Help us to know forgiveness in ourselves Help us to offer forgiveness to others. You remind us that you are the vine and we are the branches, that your love will stretch out to the farthest ends of the earth because what you have done for us, we do for others. Bless this wine, this fruit of the vine, this grape juice. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of Christ our King. following CDC code, but I don't want to exclude uh, our youth from receiving a blessing. So at this time, if you just lift your hands up like you're being held up by a robber, all of you, because you are going to bless through the power of the Holy Spirit the young people in our midst. Let us pray. Holy and gracious one, pour out your spirit upon our children and youth that they might continue to see in us your love and an example of your service and commitment. 
Bless the children and youth of Good Shepherd as they continue to lead us into new ways of serving, new ways of thinking, new ways of expressing our faith. For we are blessed by our children and youth in Jesus' name. And let the people of God say, Amen. Let us join in our prayer of thanksgiving as found upon the screen. We thank you, loving God, for feeding us at your table. Through the nourishing of bread and the fruit of the vine, grant us the grace to love you and to seek our neighbor's good. May we be truly thankful for all your good gifts in Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to call upon villains to give us our benediction. Thank you. 